Good morning. Okay. Consider the following definitions describing a world of time travelers who may observe events in different orders. I is a set with E1, E2, E3, and so on and so forth. It's the set of events, important things that have happened. So I is for important, E is for event. Uh, and these are particular events, but we're not getting names for the events or anything, just E1, E2, E3. P, uh, which is Adric, Ben, Clara, Doc, and so on and so forth, is the set of people. Ob's order, P, I, J, means person P observes that event I occurs before event J. And before I, J means event I actually happened before event J. At PI means person P was at event I, and met PQ means person P met person Q. Okay, so before IJ means something actually happened in an order, and these are time travelers, so presumably they don't necessarily have to observe events happening in the order that they really did happen. So now we're supposed to state the following in predicate logic. Ben has not met Adric, and Adric has not met Ben. Okay, we've got the met predicate, and Ben and Adric are constants in our set of people. So we want to say Ben has not met Adric, not met Ben Adric, and Adric has not met Ben, not met Adric, Ben. Okay. Clara was at every event. Okay, so we want to say Clara was at, so she's the person, P. Clara was at not just one event, but at every event. I'm going to start by just saying Clara was at I. At Clara I. And now I need I to end up being universal because I want it to end up being every event. So for all I in the set of important events at Clara I. Okay, Doc has observed two different events occurring in both possible orders. So he's observed some event happening before another and he's also observed the second event happening before the first. So we can just write that first. And then we'll figure out how to say that they're two different events. We'll just say they're I and J to start with. So OBS order DOC, I before J, and OBS order DOC, J before I. Okay, so now we need to say I and J are events. Uh, and they're not going to be every event. We're not saying he's observed every event occurring in both possible orders. Uh, there's just going to be some events, uh, but we need them not to be the same events. So first of all, we need them to be some event, and second of all, we need them not to be the same, so not equal to each other. Let's just start with that, and I is not equal to J. So I and J are events that are not equal, and this is actually in our idiom chart when we want to say two different things, or at least two things. Uh, and exists in I in I exists a J in I. So now we say there's an I and a J in the set of important events such that I is not equal to J. So there's an I and a J that are not the same. And Doc has observed I happening before J and Doc has observed J happening before I. Sounds good. Okay. Everyone who was at an event observed that event to occur before some other event but the other event is not necessarily the same for everyone. Whew. Okay, well let's not worry about the everyone, let's just have someone be at an event and then let's have them observe that to occur before some other event. So some person was at some event and they observed that event to happen before some other event. Observe order P I J. Now J is another event. That's going to be the same idiom we used up here. We want J not to be the same as I. Uh, unless it's universal. But let's just say it's existential for the moment. If it's universal, we're going to end up changing this AND 
to an implication, and we'd put parentheses around this whole thing, but let's say it's an existential for the moment unless we have to change it. So now we have an i and a j that are different from each other. Uh, this person p, we don't know who p is yet, was at i, and p observed i happening before j, so j is our other event. So it's everyone who is at an event. So for all p in p, uh, everyone who was at an event, ooh, we don't want to say they were at the event and they observed it. We want to say it's everyone, it's the subset of people who were at an event. So that actually is going to be a universal. So we're going to have to rearrange things a little. Let's take that i and j out. We'll put it over here for the moment so we don't forget about it. So we want to say for all p in p, if p was at i, then they observed these other events. So everyone who was at an event. We might want to say that there exists an event that they're at. This is a bit of a confusing point. We might want to say this. Um, but if we do, remember implication, that's the same as the negation of this side or that side. And so there's really a negation around this existential. So it's really n sort of a not exists, and that ends up being a for all not. So there does not exist something. I'm just going to write this fragment here. It says um, there's, there is nothing, right? There is nothing is kind of the fragment that that represents in English. Whereas for all not means everything didn't or doesn't. Just kind of the same thing. There's nothing that has some property or everything doesn't have that property are the same thing. So when we pull this existential out, which we need to do because otherwise this eye over here and this eye over here will be unbound, we're going to need it actually to be a universal. So let's pull it outside. And because it's a universal, and they're both universals, it doesn't matter what order these two universals come in. We can always swap two universals that are next to each other. It doesn't matter. Swapping an existential and a universal is different, but swapping two existentials or two universals doesn't matter. So for all i and p, if p was at event i, then p observed i to happen before j, and i is not equal to j. Uh, now we still don't have a j, do we? Oh goodness, we have to make more room to say that there is a j, so at p i implies exists j in the set of important events such that j is not equal to i and p observed i before j. So altogether that says consider any event, any person, if that person was at the event, so for every event, uh, for every person that was at any event there is some other event, some other event that they observe, the person observed, to happen afterwards. And that says they observed I to occur before some other event. Okay, looks like we've got it.